Hello, Groove Scott. Today I'm going to be doing some brake fluid bleeding on my 2011 Nissan Xterra. It's got about 14,000 miles on it. But the main thing is um, when uh, your brake fluid gets two or three years old, you want to drain some of it out and replace it because it's hygroscopic, meaning it absorbs moisture. So what I've done here is um, I've put some wheel chocks on the rear wheel because I'm going to take off the front wheels first. And I have the parking brake on fully engaged and I have the transmission in park. And I'm going to jack it up. But before I do that, I'm actually going to loosen the lug nuts on both the front wheels. Just barely loosen them using a breaker bar, um, not the torque wrench. You don't use the torque wrench to loosen, only to tighten. And um, also, I'm going to break away here for a second, and I'm going to come back and show you where the jacking point is. I've marked it with a white paint marker, so um, I'll be right back. Okay, right now I'm looking at the subframe behind the front wheel, and you'll see where I used a paint marker to mark the arrow that stamped into the frame. That's where the jacking point is. So. Um, that's what I'm going to use to jack it up in the front, so I'll do that. I'll get it all jacked up, get the wheels off, and I'll be right back. At this point, I have both front wheels off. I have everything on jacks. The uh, brake bleeder screw is right there. By the way, the torque value to tighten it up is 7 newton meters. Actually, 7 to 9 with an average of 7.5, so I'm going to use uh, 7 newton meters. It's about a 10 millimeter fitting. I've tried other sizes, Whitworth. Leland, uh, metric, American, and 10 millimeter seems to be the best. So you want to use a 10 millimeter metric six point socket to remove it because these bleeder screws get damaged real easy. And like I had mentioned, when you tighten it up, you want to use seven Newton meters. Over tightening it will strip it right out. Also, while we're in here, I'm going to armor all everything, all the different boots and rubber pieces. But before I get started on that, I want to show you how to prepare the brake reservoir, so I'll be right back. This is the brake reservoir, and what I've done is I've marked the max level. In the min level, I used a um, yellow paint marker to highlight those. Um, this uses a Bosch anti-lock braking system module. It's over here. If you get air in the lines, you have to take it to the dealer to have them run it with a computer to clean the air out. So what you want to do is make sure you never go below the minimum. So what we're going to do here is we're going to drain some fluid out. It's a two-person job. And before it gets down below the low, we'll add more fluid in. So what we're doing is not completely bleeding the brakes, but getting rid of most of the brake fluid. So we'll do both the fronts and then we'll do the rears. Um, I recommend you put a towel underneath everything because brake fluid eats up paint. So you want to be real careful about that. You have to use brake fluid from a clean preferably unopened container. In my case, I'm going to use a container I opened about a month ago, but it's a metal container. It's sealed. It's Pentosin, good quality German brake fluid. And um, that's pretty much everything to get started. Also, you want, you want to wear safety glasses while you're doing this, and I'm going to put on some rubber gloves. So I'm going to go through the steps of describing how to bleed it here in a second. Okay, so this is the... Uh, brake bleeder screw and what you're going to do is you're going to use a six point socket to loosen it up just barely you don't want to loosen it all the way up because it'll suck air in and you're going to put a open wrench in on it like this so that you can open and close it and you're going to attach a hose coming here into a suitable waste container and what you're going to do is carefully open it up while you instruct somebody inside the vehicle to push down on the brake pedal and you have to close it back before they release the brake pedal, otherwise it'll suck air in here. So you're going to open it up and have them push down on the pedal and bleed fluid into the container. And then you're going to close it and then have them release the pedal. That's really important. Now I'm also going to put some brake fluid at the bottom of my container so that this hose goes down into fluid and that should help prevent sucking up any air into the lines. So. Um, I'll do that. All I can do, like I said, is describe how to do that and then we'll um, put it back together. I'll show you how to torque it up and we'll be right back. So thanks. At this point, I've uh, bled both front wheels, each time checking the reservoir fairly frequently. And 
what you do now is on the bleeder screw, um, you want to tighten it up to seven newton meters using a hand torque wrench. So like that. And then you're going to put the uh, rubber cap back on. And then um, I'm going to spray all in here with some Armor All. I'll come back and show you that here in a second. I've soaked everything thoroughly with Armor All. Things like the rack and pinion boots, these bushings up here, um, all of the McPherson strut pieces, all the boots, everything that's rubber that I can find. I give a good soaking with Armor All while I have the wheels off. And I'm actually going to rotate the tires while I'm working on this truck. And the uh, wheel lug nut tightening torque on this truck is 98 foot-pounds. So important to use a torque wrench and torque them in a uh, crisscross pattern. So I'll put the wheels back on and I'll move to the rear. So I'll be back shortly. At this point, I have retorqued the front wheels on to 98 Foot-pounds, that's foot-pounds, like, it's like 133 newton meters, I think. Uh, you have to look it up in the specs. Put wheel chocks on the front wheels. I have pre-loosened the rear wheel lug nuts. I'm going to move to the rear wheels now. So I'll show you where the jacking point is in just a second, and we'll jack it up from there. Okay, the rear jacking point is right underneath that, what I'm going to call shackle for the leaf spring, under the rear differential. I'm actually going to only jack up one side at a time and bleed one side at a time. It's just easier and I have a jack stand up on the frame up in front of this as a safety. So when I pull the wheel off, if anything was to fall, we're going to work safe. So we'll pull the wheel off. I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so right here is the uh, rear bleeder screw. Same as the front. It's going to get seven newton meters of tightening torque. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to loosen it with a six point socket. And then we're going to um, bleed the brakes. And the way I sh uh, described, I can't show you because I'm working alone. And um, then I'll put it all back together. I'll armor all anything in here that has rubber bushings or anything in it. And I'll torque the wheels back on to 98 foot pounds. And it'll be done. So that's really all there is to this. Again, just make sure you don't. Um, that, that you don't bleed the reservoir down to the point where it gets air in the lines and make sure you close this before the person in the truck lets the pedal up because otherwise it'll suck air back in. So if you're careful of those things, it's a pretty easy job. Um, takes about an hour and a half, two hours at home with just regular home tools like I have. If you had a lift, you could do it in 20 minutes. So that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching. Tschüss.